Hello friends, welcome back to this channel. So in the earlier session we saw CloudFront. Now in this session we are going to talk about Amazon FSx. So without any further ado let's get started the session. FSx is a managed service on AWS, which allows you to launch third-party high-performance file system in AWS. And it is fully managed service, and the idea is that, maybe sometimes you don't want to use Amazon S3, you don't want to use EFS, you want to use something else and you may want to use for example, Luster, or Window File Server, or NetApp ONTAP. So from an exam perspective, you should think of FSx as a way to launch third-party high-performance file systems, and the exam will test you on FSx for Luster, and FSx for Windows File Server. For NetApp ONTAP it does not cover the exam. So in this session, I will only cover, FSx for Luster, and FSx of Windows File Server. So first let's talk about Amazon FSx for Windows and the problem statements. So let's explore first Amazon FSx for Windows File Server. So EFS was to give a shared POSIX system for Linux system. And FSx for Windows is similar, is going to give you a fully managed Windows file system shared drive, accessible for your Windows computers and also Linux computers. It supports the SMB protocol, as well as Windows NTFS, and it has Microsoft Active Directory integration, ACLs, and user quotas. So it gives you a file system that is shared for all your Windows machines easily. But you can also mount it on Linux EC2 instance, so it works both, for Windows, and Linux, but remember this is a Windows file system. Now it can scale up to tens of gigabytes per second, millions of IOPS, and hundreds of petabytes of data. Now storage options for your FSx for Windows are, either to use an SSD, and this is when you want to have latency-sensitive workloads, or HDD this is a hard drive for another kind of workload such as a home directory or a CMS and so on, but latency is less important. So SSD is of course going to be more expensive than HDD. Now FSx for Windows can be also accessed from your on-premises infrastructure using a VPN or the Direct Connect service. You can configure it to be multi-AS, and provide you high availability. You can also back up your data daily to Amazon S3. Now let's talk about the second kind of Amazon FSx, which is Amazon FSx for Luster. So Luster is used to do a distributed file system, that is going to be used for large-scale computing. So Luster is the derived from Linux, and Cluster. It is used for machine learning, and high-performance computing, or HPC, and this is a keyword you need to look for to know that you need FSx for Luster. So you can have applications such as video processing, financial modeling, electronic design automation. You have massive scale, so you can scale up to hundreds of gigabytes of data per second, millions of IOPS, and sub-milliseconds latency. For storage, we have two options, either you want an SSD for very low latency, IOPS intensive workload as well as small and random file operations, or HDD. If you want throughput intensive workloads for large and sequential file operations. You have seamless integration with Amazon S3, that means that you can read S3 as a file system through FSx, and you can write the output of the computations from FSx back to Amazon S3. Finally, it can be used from on-premises servers, through VPN or Direct Connect. So now let's do a quick overview of Amazon FSx, and FSx is not something you're expected to know how to create, it is good for us to just see the options. So as you can see, we are in our FSx file system. So, let's create a file system. Here as you can see, we have four options. So, we have NetApp ONTAP, we have OpenZFS, we have Windows File Server, and Luster. But the exam will really focus on the Windows File Server and the Luster type of file systems for FSx. So first, let's consider just Windows File Server. So this is going to give us a managed Windows File Server file system. And then I click on Next. And we can see the different options we have. So we have multi AS and single AS. Definitely you want to use a multi AS for production, and single AS for testing. Storage type we have SSD, or HDD. And then, the size of your Windows file server, so between 32 GB and 64 terabytes. Then based on whatever you said, so for example I say 16,000 GB, based on what you say. Then the throughput capacity is going to be either the recommended one, 
or you can specify what throughput you want for your file system. Here in a VPC with different subnets, and so on. You integrate with Windows Authentication, because this is a Windows file server. Here you can encrypt it. And then we can control the auditing. You can control the access. The backup and maintenance and so on. But again, we keep things at a high level just to show you the important things. That you can have a multi AS and a single AS. SSD and HDD and so on. Now next, if you go to Amazon FSX for Luster. So this is for high performance computing HPC and this is super important to know. So I click on next. And we have this file system. So we have two options. We can get a persistence on SSD. Or persistence HDD. Or we can get a scratch SDD. So persistent is good for longer term storage and workloads. And the data is going to be replicated in case the servers fail. And the scratch file systems are ideal for temporary storage and short term processing of data. So we can do persistence SSD for example. And we can define it throughputs. So do we want to have 125 megabytes per second per terabyte of storage? And then how many terabytes do you want? So 1.2 terabytes sounds great, which gives us a throughput of 150 megabytes per second. Do we want compression on the data? And what version of Luster do we want? Then we have the same settings from before. So network settings, encryption settings, imports and backup maintenance. So guys, this is it for FSX, I hope you like it. So guys, that's it for this video, I hope you liked it. I will see you in the next lecture. If you have any question or any doubt, feel free to ask in the comment section below. I will answer you as soon as I can. Thank you for watching. Bye and have a nice day.